Dear students, today we will discuss on topic crop losses due to insect pests under storage condition. Under storage condition, the information on crop losses caused during tracing, handling, transportation, and storage is scanty scattered and poorly published in India as well as abroad. The estimation of losses at post-harvest levels could vary depending upon the methodology adopted. The losses are assessed with respect to its biological and an economic value. The economist loss refers to changes in values that may take place as a result of physical alternations of a produce while it is in tracing, handling, and transportation, thereby resulting into a loss, normally termed as economic loss. From the farmer's point of view, the crop, when harvested, is traced, handled, stored, and transported. Ultimately, what one gets is the difference in the quantity harvested and sold. There might have some loss. At post-harvest level, the loss may vary from 1 to 80 percent. However, at places, 80 to 90 percent loss were also reported. Next, we will briefly discuss on classification of storage losses. Losses of storage occur at different stages in the movement of fruit from field to the consumer. They may be classified into number one, quantitative, and number two, qualitative. Number one, quantitative losses. Losses may occur due to loss of weight as a result of reducing the moisture content of the grain. It may also result from grain depredation by insect, rodents, and birds. Mishandling of grain also leads to losses in quantity. Next, qualitative losses. Qualitative losses caused by insects is quantified on the basis that each affected grain kernel has on an average lost half of its value in terms of food quality both in physical changes or chemical changes in fat, carbohydrates and proteins and by contamination of mycotoxins, pesticide residues, insect fragments or excreta of rodents and birds and their dead bodies. When this qualitative deterioration makes food unfit for human consumption and is rejected, this contributes to food loss. The factors which are responsible for these losses are discoloration of grains due to development of mold or faulty method of grain drying, deterioration in nutritional quality and presence of insect fragments, excreta, urine, etc. A few beetles carry toxins on their body, which they are capable of imparting to the infested grains. Then the next subtopic is on factors involved in the deterioration of store produced. The factors which are responsible for the deterioration of store produced are number one, chemical change in store produced. Number two, growth of microorganisms on produce. Number three, development of insects and mites on produce. Number four, feeding on produce by rodents. Next, number five, human mishandling of produce affecting quality and causing loss to spillage. Next, number six, use of poor containers and store. Next, number seven, exposure of produced to extremes of temperature and moisture. Next subtopic is on symptoms of crop losses. Crop losses can be manifested by number one, weight loss, number two, food loss, number three, quality loss, number four, monetary loss, number five, loss of goodwill or reputation, and number six, seed loss. Number one, weight loss. It is caused by evaporation of moisture before or during storage, 
feeding off by insects, rodents, and birds, and spillers in transport. Number two, food loss. It is caused by exposure of products to extremes of temperature and humidity during drying, processing, and storage, resulting in depletion or reduction of nutrients like vitamins and amino acids. Another reason is the selective damage of grain parts by insects and microbial agents. Insects infestation cause severe losses in the nutritive value of the food. We will speed mainly on the carbohydrate portion of the maize grain reduces caloric value. Production of aflatoxins by fungus, that is, Aspergillus species in groundnut. Next, number three, quality lost. It is due to uniformity of grain size, appearance, color, texture, and dirt. Next, number four, monetary lost. During the time of market glut, the prices of produce are usually low. For one of adequate storage facilities, a farmer is forced to sell his produce at relatively low price. Next, number five, loss of goodwill or reputation. It usually matters in international trade market. The recommended standards of hygiene and quality of produce are inability to maintain and it may spoil good or reputation. Next, number six, seed loss. It occurs due to physical factors such as light, moisture, temperature, mechanical factors such as damaging seed coat or breaking of grains resulting in loss of viability. It is apparent through reduced germination, abnormal growth of rootless and shoots, and reduced vigor of the plant. Then we will discuss on estimate of losses. Losses to food grain are calculated with different concepts. A trader represents the loss as difference in the quantities received and quantities disposed of. It may also be at different stages like during transportation, loading and unloading, heaping, cleaning, weightmen, packaging and storage. All these stages give rise to greater losses on account of damnest, weevils, and other organisms. The synchrous due to loss in moisture and chemical changes being interrelated invite more complexities in estimation. Losses in stores may be by weight and change in physical state of grain chemical due to biological activities. The biological activities may be on dry basis and wet basis. Wet basis is due to moisture. The biochemical changes result into increase in fat acidity, reduction of non-reducing sugars, heating and loss of nutritional constituents. In dry form, the moisture increase is due to insect, microbial or fungal activity where biochemical changes and heating take place at a later stage. Intellectual estimates. As early as 1961, Fletcher reported losses in stores to the tune of 33%. Report of marketing series gap 3% loss due to foodstuff worth $300 million only due to insect pests of store cereals. Food and Agriculture Organization, that is FAO, experts estimated as 10% loss of harvested crop by biological attack while in storage. Losses in handling, processing, and storage of fruit grains are very high as much as 50% in developing countries. The FAO earlier published an estimate of 5% losses annually through insect infestation of all harvested cereals, pulses, and oil seeds. Experimental or actual estimates. Macro estimate is termed as the actual estimate often out of experiments conducted and that gives a true picture of losses in stores. Though information at present is scanty and fragmentary, but still some information is on record. 
the account of estimated losses reported seems to be in soft conflict because of the absence of one standard method for assessment. Study on rural wheat grain stories in Ludhiana district of Punjab reckon the loss in Malatian treated grain as 0.5% and in untreated varying from 1.1 to 3.1 percent different storage practiced. Macrostimate of losses found that adult Calendra orisi consumed in a week an amount of wheat approximately equal to their own weight and Rhizoparta dominica five to six times of their weight. Different indices for grain deterioration. There are different indices which show the deterioration in store grains. They are number one, SEDT measurement as an index of deterioration. Deterioration in grain and its milk products in stores is accompanied by an increase in acidity. Hydrogen ion concentration tends to increase with age, but because of the buffer action of proteins and other constituents of grain, marked changes in hydrogen ion concentration ordinarily do not occur until deterioration is fairly well advanced. Tritable acidity tends to increase significantly even in early stages of deterioration. The tritable acidity of grain and its milk products can be determined by the following methods. Number A, the Bestley and Baston method. Under this, the meal of 10 is digested with 80% alcohol, filtered and diluted the aliquot of filtrate with water and tritrated the acid with standard alkali using phenolphthalein as indicator. The results so often are expressed as the number of milliliters of normal potassium hydroxide required to neutralize the 1000 gram of corn. Number B the Greek or bowl method. The acidity of flour is determined by extracting the flour with 85% alcohol. Extract is filtered and filtrate is tritated with alcoholic potash using curcuma as an indicator. Results are expressed as percent sulfuric acid. Next, number C, Schoolerud's method. Flour is digested with 75% alcohol and filtrate is tritated with standard alkali using phenolphthalein. Results are expressed as milliliters of normal alkali required to neutralize the acid with 100 gram flour. Next, number D. Method based on determination of free fatty acid. The fats and free fatty acids are extracted with suitable solvent and determine the free fatty acids content either of definite weight of extracted material or of material extracted from definite weight of original grain or flour. The fat acidity, phosphate acidity and total tritable acidity increase with the deterioration of wheat in store and that the viability of wheat has direct relationship. High fat acidity value have been shown to be associated with high content of damaged kernels. The presence of sick wheat, low viability, and poor bread baking quality. Next, number two, disappearance or non reducing sugar as an index or deterioration. The activity of enzymes that split non reducing sugars is less variable than the activity of fat splitting enzymes among different kinds of molds. The non reducing sugar content of corn and other grains may therefore be a better index of the degree of moldiness and perhaps of overall deterioration than the fat acidity of grain. The moisture is the major factor responsible for the changes brought about in store grain, development of insects and mites, and prolification of fungus. The moisture content is affected by the climatic conditions and adaptation to environment. Moisture studies have demonstrated that the possibility of long-term storage without insect damage and without any loss of quality decreases with the increase in rainfall. Therefore, it is essential 
to measure moisture content before storing grains. Moisture content can be determined by number A, oven method, number B, air oven method, number C, vacuum oven method, number D, drying with desiccants, number E, toluin distillation method, number F, brown cuvel distillation method, number G, direct heating method, number H, calcium carbide method, number I, dichromate method, and number J, method of relative humidity measurement. Out of these methods, the oven method is the best recognized method. Next, number three, changes in fat as an index. The grain fats and oils are changed either by hydrolysis, which may result in free fatty acids. If only flour is kept in storage for short term, it will give some surly odor even at low moisture content. The whole kernels having antioxidants and fats are protected. Grain fats are affected by lipases, which turn to free fatty acids or glycerols with the length of storage. Fat hydrolysis is faster as compared to carbohydrates and proteins. Next, number four, changes in nutrients. Vitamins like thiamine, niacin, pyridoxine, inositol, biotin, and vitamin E are found more in cereal grains. Pentotenic acid and para amino benzoic acid are present too. The reduction of thiamine content in storage is quite rapid, even at 12% moisture content. Betty store at 10% moisture thiamine reduced more. There is also presence of germination inhibitors which causes the loss of grain viability. This is due to the presence of microorganisms and may be due to attack of vermin. Insect feeding on store grains cause direct loss of protein along with other nutrients. Thus, as the weight loss of grains increased, the loss of protein content also increased. The person protein damage kernel in comparison to protein present in healthy grain were found in decreasing order and sometimes in increasing order. Kernel infestation and type of damage had some relation with decrease and increase in percent protein. However, the samples having higher percent germ damage had decreased protein content. So students, in this chapter, we have discussed on classification of storage losses, factors involved in the deterioration of store produce, symptoms of crop losses, estimate of losses, and different indices for grain deterioration. Now, we can conclude that. Losses in store products are seldom a result of a single variable. They are of a multiple character, including losses in weight, quality, nutritive value, and market value. Each of this type of losses may have different significance, which varies with people and in the face of existing methods and techniques. The losses are not limited to technical and physical factors only. The socio-economic realities do play an important role particularly in developing nations. Thank you.